Hi everybody, Kara Santa Maria here. I recently read a fascinating report detailing new research from China. It builds upon previous studies, like you're seeing in this video, where scientists at the University of Pittsburgh trained a monkey to use its brain to control a robotic arm. Now the amazing thing about the new Chinese study is that Dr. Zhang Zhao Zhang claims that she managed to train a monkey to use its mind to control individual fingers of a hand. This is a vast improvement on previous models since the neuronal connections required for fine motor control are significantly more complicated. When I saw this report in New Scientist, the number of comments condemning this work got me thinking. So I reached out to Tom Holder founder of Speaking of Research, an advocacy group dedicated to providing accurate information about the importance of animal research in medical and veterinary science, to ask what he thinks about this study and others like it. It shows a very exciting piece of research where a monkey is in a restraint chair because it's got uh, microchips implanted in its head which will allow it to telepathically control an arm giving a lot of hope for, say, amputees who can get prosthetic arms that they could then better control. At first glance, this photo may not sit well, because the monkey kind of looks like a disembodied head. In fact, a common paradigm in this type of research is to place the animal in an apparatus designed to keep the monkey still. Most likely, the rest of its body is obstructed from view beneath the apparatus. We do the exact same thing when we uh, do research with humans. I mean, if we ever plant an electrode into a human, then we would have them in a full restraint because the last thing you want for the human or the animal's welfare is for them to move around when there's something implanted within their brain. In the United States, the Federal Animal Welfare Act requires appropriate housing, feeding, handling, sanitation, ventilation, and sheltering of all animals used in research. Also, each lab must operate within its own local, state, and university guidelines regarding the welfare of animals used for experimentation. In China, the government requires researchers to abide by standardized regulations on the management of experimental animals. If Dr. Zhao Zhang's lab is abiding by such regulations, and we have no reason to believe it's not, I fully support this research, as it could lead to exciting and necessary advances in future brain-controlled prosthetics for amputees. Without animal research, we would be centuries behind in our efforts to prevent and treat disease and suffering, both in modern human and veterinary medicine. From heart transplants to blood transfusions to vaccines to the pharmaceuticals that you and I take almost every day, none of that would be possible without laboratory animals. And even Peter Singer, famed animal rights activist and author of a book entitled Animal Liberation, said that if an experiment on a small number of animals can cure a disease that affects tens of thousands, it could be justifiable. So when it comes down to it, aren't we mostly debating an arbitrary line in the sand? Do many people think that research on Drosophila melanogaster or C. elegans is morally indefensible? If life is life, why don't mice and monkeys fall under the same category as insects and worms? I'm interested to hear your thoughts. You can reach out to me on Twitter, Facebook, or leave your comments right here on the Huffington Post. Come on, talk nerdy to me.